Very quickly, I just wanted to, I think it's important for um, the people here to go back to the beginning before we go forward. And I was involved very much when we, you decided to make this piece this evening, Silk Road. And um, my memory of it was really, you just wanted to dance. <laughs> which is so beautiful because so, so much of work is made with, you know, a foresight into agenda and ticking boxes and what's trendy and what's not trendy. And I remember Jose just wanting to dance and wanting to, to dance to good music. <laughs> so you want to talk a bit about that process very quickly, just to give a framework. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Really a pleasure to share, be here in Fairfield Hall. You know, we've been now for two weeks. And it's been, yeah, amazing with the whole team, with everyone. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, thank you, Maven, for being here. It's uh, uh, the whole process uh, start with Maven. And uh, he, uh, I mean, he is, uh, is the big reason why Silk Road happened. You know, I spoke with him. He was the first person, I think, and I asked, uh, I said, you know, I have this idea, I would like to do this show, yeah, and I want to dance. And uh, I want to come back to my roots, uh, because those roots uh, they are uh, flamenco. And when I started to do flamenco, I always used to have a lovely guitar, percussion, and a voice uh, for rehearsals all the time. And uh, in contemporary dance, I was missing that. So I went to Maven, and in, in that time, Maven was with a um the national company of malta and i was resident uh, in the in the company as well artist in resident and he said yes straight away <laughs> and and then that's it that that was the, the the whole beginning so then we just uh, finding the rest you know finding the money finding the co-producers finding the the amazing team and then of course uh, i was lucky that uh, i knew these two amazing uh, artists I mean, yeah, they are musicians, composers, and artists that uh, uh, they enrich my life every day with music. And it's so nice to hear everyone here. They say, oh my God, the music is amazing. I want the, I want the CD, you know. I want the, I was like, yeah, they're amazing, I <laughs> know. So they, yeah, it was just amazing to, to start from the beginning really with them, no, with the music, you know, working with them, you know, um, and really from really from uh, from a scratch. Normally, normally, I uh, like uh, Giuliano, Bern I mean, three of you, we were together in other projects, and I come with a lot of planning, no, for Silk Road. I was like, uh, I didn't get, I didn't plan much, and I felt like uh, it, it came from really from beginning, you know, and uh, everything started um, growing. Mm. Yeah. Can you just very quickly, Bernard, just give us an insight into um, the kind of direction for, because it's true what he's saying, it was very organic, but you did have to de devise a, a, a clear direction <laughs> musically of not, it's just kind of, be, you know, not going anywhere. So can you tell us what was the framework with which? Yep. Hello, everybody. Um, for the music, mm, we, we spent some time in Madrid where we met flamenco musicians, where we researched and we got inspirations and we researched traditional material, which we wanted to bring into the first half. So the first half was about having the pure traditional forms. I mean, pure is relative because <laughs> <laughs> we play Western instruments, but nevertheless, we tried to stay close to the traditional material. So we, so we brought in some flamenco inspiration. Uh, then here in England, we worked with the uh, choreographer Nahid Siddiqui, uh, who who was working with Jose, uh, and that's a bit more our territory, so we had a bit more ideas of what we wanted the music to be. So those were the two main influences that you saw in the first half. And then the second half, we were really trying to sort of work with the what, we ha or what we brought in and then bring it into a contemporary context. And uh, that's why you see, for example, in the first half, the traditional, uh, the, the instruments are quite acoustic. And in the second half, it's a more of a contemporary produced score uh, where we use other sounds. We use the drum kit and we use effects and so on. So really it was uh, going to, tra to something traditional 
bring it in and then hopefully translate it into something that's relevant to us and that is contemporary in its essence. Um, yeah, hello everyone. Um, yeah, the, the process was quite interesting because uh, me and Bernard, we are uh, students, we've been for a long time, of Indian classical music is an area that uh, it's been really interesting us musically. We've been researching uh, for quite quite a few years now. Whether like the flamenco part of things, even if I play guitar, ironically, is something that I actually never addressed as a as a style. It's such a deep style, and I do not. I'm not a flamenco musician by any means. It's a lifetime commitment, just there on its own. And um, but Indian classical is actually something that I have been working on. So the flamenco part was quite difficult because it was about taking on traditional material that you never played before and finding a way of uh, still presenting it, you know, and keep intact the essence of what you're doing. Um, you know, you don't want, and this is goes also for the Indian classical side, you just want to stay away from the idea of like cultural appropriation and, and, and cliche and reinforcing cliche of what you're doing. So you got to address this issue in your mind when you approach something musically and, uh, um, so for me that was a very interesting journey because uh, I have learned a lot from it and uh, I realized that I'm not a flamenco guitarist. Um, so, but you know, you're still working and trying to find your own voice within a tradition, I think, that we should all be uh, kind of entitled to do. So working with Silk Road has a ha comes from a very specific lens that, you know, it has a framework that, that gave you quite a lot of space to, to find your voice in it and, and really your own history in that sense of migration and travel and cultures. Your, the next project is your stage in Carmen. So that is very specific. It's a full length piece. It's a, you're, you're really delving into storytelling of a well-known narrative. Um, can you tell us a bit about, about that? Yeah, definitely. <coughs> Do you know about Carmen? All right, good. So, um, yeah, I think Silver was a, a lot of investigation, a lot of um, understanding thing, you know, like uh, it took me, I think, a couple of years to understand the show and what I was doing, why I was doing it. And... Uh, first notes, it was a very personal piece. Yeah, well. yeah very yeah. personal, no, very personal. It was about, uh, it was about my journey coming uh, in a step, you know, about the Silk Road as a concept. Yeah, it's something that started in China, and then there was the a uh, true of the trading, you know, uh, exchange, and um, was uh, Giuliano who first uh, told me about, you know, this thing about the Silk Road, you know, it's such a beautiful concept, and then you know the uh, it, it became the title of the of the piece, and then we talk a lot about the idea of the silk, you know, the subtlety uh, about what is masculine, feminine, you know, and that's why with, with Maven as well, we talk al many things about that. And how flamenco is, uh, how Indian dance is, you know, the different culture. So for me was, a, I have a big, um, uh, I grew up as a flamenco dancer, uh, but then uh, my last, I will say, almost 10 years now, I've been immersed in Indian culture with uh, knowing a lot of people, training with Akran Kam, learning from people like Maven, learning a lot uh, with Shoban Jay Singh as well. So that was kind of moving all many things, no? And um, But by the end of, of Silk Road, I was like, uh, okay, I think I need to go deeper into my root, where I come from, and to do something that I don't need to understand is uh, in my skin, is inside me, something that uh, just, just I understand the language, but not, not only the language of the flamenco, but the why happened, you know, what is the story behind? So I have the, the chance to start to investigate in, in Malta as well, uh, maybe in love the idea, and, and then we embark in the idea of investigating the, the piece, you know, the concept of Carmen, and uh, then Fairfield Hall, you know, um, Croydon Council, yeah, uh, decided to co-produce uh, Carmen and present it here. Yeah, um, I have to ask because obviously it, it's so well known. I'm, I, I'm sure it's not BZ that you're using, but but uh, is there uh, uh, is there going to be a sense of the 
composition coming from the canon or is it completely new? The music is completely new. We didn't want to reference uh, the, the original score. Um, and the sound is very much set in the Mediterranean. So that was also important when we went to Malta to do a creation there. Uh, that, that culture which is very present uh, and also connecting it to Jose's roots in flamenco. So it has a strong flamenco touch, uh, but it is very contemporary. I would, I would lo love to call it cinematic flamenco contemporary music. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it features uh, guitar, cello, beautiful cello, and some voices and a lot of percussion. And also one, uh, one of the main songs is from Giuliano's group called Kafaya. Maybe you could uh, say something about that. Uh, yeah, there's uh, uh, one track that Jose has been, I uh, think, listening and he enjoying, and he's got. Um, uh, it's from my band, the, from our first album, and he's using it as a recorded track. But it kind of works within, I guess, the narrative of the piece. And uh, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how much you actually refer to the meaning of the song within the piece. Yeah, but the song is called Indignados, which is kind of inspired by the Spanish political movements that uh, came like during the the recession, which was a bit like Occupy Wall Street. It was like uh, essentially um, a group of people taking control of public spaces in form of protest. So we kind of wrote a song around this idea, which is quite, uh, you know, it's got a bit of a revolutionary feel to it, you know, and quite high energy. So I don't know how this is tied actually into the narrative of the piece, but that's what the song is kind of about. But, um, yeah, in, in reference to that, uh, I mean, we when we immerse into the idea of Carmen, so for me it was very important. I grew up in south of Spain, and the the present of not only in flamenco, but the present of the community of the gypsies is uh, it is very present. So, um, what does that mean? You know, it's a, it's a minority, you know, and that minority during the Second World War, you know, was a genocide that happened again the um, again the gypsies, you know, a lot of. Uh, so we address that from one side. We address many things about the um, the idea, the way they live. They are not uh, not apologetic, you know. The idea of uh, of really believing in their own kind of ideas and the own. So we really uh, immerse ourselves in these all um, issues as well, quite parallel and quite, I think, relevant in nowadays, no? Absolutely. Does anyone have any questions? Where is Carmen having its world premiere? <laughs> uh, maybe you could say, Claire? <laughs> Claire, is the, Claire Cunningham is the producer. <laughs> okay, so yes, the premiere, the world premiere of Carmen will be here. Uh, we will have some other previews. Yeah, here at the Fairfield Hall. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be at the main hall. It, it won't be at the Ashcroft, it will be at the Phoenix. The Phoenix. Yeah. And it, it's also the first production that's to be s being supported by the Creative Enterprise Zone Production Fund. Uh, which hopefully will be supporting about seven new productions in the next few years that are made, created, developed and premiered here at Fairfield Halls. Some more, que some more questions, please. Um, Mevin and Jose, uh, I think all of you, because I saw the first sharing that happened of Silk Road, which uh, really was quite fantastic, even in the, the sharing stage of Stratford. Uh, since then, again, uh, having presented at Dance Festival Curtain last year with Kenning, just had moved, come into the company and was doing what was essentially was Maven's part. Uh, and seeing it today, which has sort of evolved by itself. Uh, so one uh, process of evolution, uh, how does it change with, with the, uh, a person changing, uh, a dancer changing, and, and the way the choreography and the music changes accordingly. So some, something about that process. And also because does Carmen connect, in a sense, with the fact that because one is talking about a gypsy sort of scenario, uh, the whole idea of travel, mm -hmm. which is also part of Silk Road, it was this whole idea of people who were moving, 
who were trading, who were living a life of slightly nomadic life, to make them? Does it connect in that sense for you when you're making this piece? Um, in terms of the um, the transition with Kenny, I think one thing um, which is, is interesting, when Jose came to me and said, let's dance together, it really was with a very clear perspective of let's, come on, let's two 40-year-old men, <laughs> really, uh, uh, get back into a space where we are able, we are as artists, we know who we are. So the sense of... Um, uh, a, a choreographic structure that understands the necessity for the individual to bring with him his personal narratives uh, was something that from the start was structured because it was us going into the space. So therefore, when Kenny came, I think the structure in itself provided the space for Kenny to bring his history into it, which is very different from mine, of course. And saying that, I have to say, I mean, we've been talking about Claire as a producer, but um, Claire Cunningham is, for me, one of the best rehearsal directors in this country. So she has the tremendous skill of navigating Kenny through that process, because he has to dance <laughs> in it, uh, and navigating Kenny to find his voice through it. So she, I think, plays a very in integral role for Kenny to find that space, which um, I saw him, I did one rehearsal with him, right at the beginning. So for me, it was wonderful to watch him today, actually. Mm -hmm. Any more questions from? Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for your beautiful show. It was beautiful. Um, I just wanted to ask more about the cultural appropriation question, just because it's, I think it's such a important topic and powerful, you know, so layered. Um, so I, I decided not to read too much about the show and just come. And so my kind of journey in the first half was there was lots of questions and then they began to be answered in the second half. But I would just love to hear kind of your journey with that question as a, as a community, as a company. I mean, for me, you answer already what I love it. <laughs> but um, I think I'm going to pass to Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's <laughs> Babes, you know. on a Babes. Saturday night, you want to have this conversation <laughs> now. <laughs> Cheers. Um, I think, I think um, listen, I think uh, it's, it's highly complex, that notion of cultural appropriation, particularly today. Um, but uh, from my perspective, um, why I would say that uh, as a minority in many levels, uh, culturally, sexually, <laughs> Um, you know, in every sense of the word. Um, for me to go into a project which has so many layers of uh, cultural layers, mm -hmm. um, um, essentially by three white men <laughs> <laughs> next to me, um, means that I have a tremendous amount of trust in a, the sense of integrity with which they are, are, are committing to it. And I would say for uh, essentially, I, I guess the, 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 the key factor to it is that all three uh, come from a space of deep immersion. So the relationship with those cultures is not, um, it's not a fleeting, it's not a, it's not a fleeting uh, um, kind of um, fascination. <laughs> it is a deep embodied state by now. Um, and so then the dialogue is absolutely different. So that's how I would leave it. Okay. I Thank you. I thank think you. Yeah. I think that's a I good think, note I to think leave that's on. a perfect time to leave it. I just want to say a big thank you to Bernard, Giuliano, to Maven, and of course to Jose. Thank you. Performance tonight was absolutely beautiful. It was just mesmerizing, stunning. Beautiful show. Really beautiful. It's I absolutely love flamenco and katak dance and the way that they kind of moved between the two movements and mixed in contemporary and I was seeing like all sorts of different styles. The show is a contemporary dance piece which is just fabulous. Uh, the, the way it blends so beautifully, there's stuff happening, there's choreographed stuff. And to come and see a piece like this at Fairfield Hall is just a treat. Walking into this space, you know, it's I would say it's as nice as a venue on the South Bank and the central London. Um, it's got that kind of vibe of like 
looking after your people and like a, a kind of abundant vibe to it. I'm currently sitting in this amazing, feels like a VIP lounge with beautiful sofas and decor. And yeah, I'm really excited for Croydon. I think this is what Croydon needs and it just feels like a really bubbly, exciting change for the, for the county. To live in Croydon and to be able to see uh, work that usually gets seen at Sadler's Wells or South Bank here in Croydon at Fairfield Halls. What better can one ask? This is fabulous. There are so many talented artists in this area and I feel like this is a hub. This is the potential to create something here in Croydon instead of us all having to go outside and kind of starting to, to nurture the talent that's already existing in this area.